What's going on you guys? Back at it with another video. I just got here to the venue. It's at Hyatt Regency here in Deerfield and RCG again because Rivers and Grand Vic does not allow filming but today I'm going to be playing 1-2 buying in for the standard 200 and yeah I've been running fairly good the last few sessions I played at Rivers so I think today will be another sign of that and hopefully we'll see some fire hands so let's go first hand on the button we looked on a king queen offsuit and it is a straddled pot so we decide to open the action up to 15 when it is folded around to us and we get called by just the big blind and we go heads up to a flop and it's not the best flop for our exact hand four five seven two diamonds when the small blind checks I don't want to really get tricky here so I decide to check back and now we bink the turn with the queen of clubs. So we have top pair, decent kicker. When he checks, I want to go into value mode and I bet 15. And he makes the call rather quickly. So now the river is the king of clubs. Not the best card. I do have two pair, but I think I was ahead on the turn anyway. And when he checks to me, I decide to go for some value of $25. And he folds pretty quick. So we take the pot down. In this next hand, we looked down at pocket jacks and under the gun, and we open the action up to $10 and get immediately three bet from under the gun one to $30. And when it folds around to the small blind, he puts in the call. And I think this should always be a three bet or a four bet, but I don't want to overplay jacks, but we just call and we see a great flop. Jack eight deuce, two diamonds. When the small blind checks, we decide to check to the aggressor and he does oblige with a bet of $20. Now the small blind thinks for a little bit and gets out of the way. And we could be raising, but I want to keep his bluffs and middling pocket pairs in there. So I just decide to call. And now we go to the turn, which is the deuce of spades boating us up. Couldn't have asked for a better turn. And I'm pretty sure we have the best hand now. So now I'm just trying to get as much value as I can. So I check it over to him, and he does not disappoint. He puts in a bet of $55. And now I look at my stack, I only have about 112 effective, so it doesn't really make sense just to call, as I'll have a fifth of the pot size bet behind. So I just decided to get it all in here, and after I get it all in, he folds rather quickly. So he later said that he had pocket sixes, nice hand, Garrett. And he put a lot of pressure on me in this hand. I'm sure he would have if I didn't flop top set and turn a boat. But we'll be in some big pots later in the session with Garrett. And I just decided to show him my nuts here. In this next hand, it's limped around to me in the cutoff. And I looked down at pocket sevens. It was limped by like three or four players. And I don't like that many people to hand with hands like this. And I decided to open the action up to 20 when it's limped by four players. I'm in the cutoff, actually. So it's not an outrageous open, as there was a lot of dead money in the middle. And with this, I get called by the button and under the gun one. And we go three ways to a spectacular flop. King, six, seven, but it is all hearts. So not the best flop, but... We'll take a set, and when the under the gun player checks, I see bet to 20 as I don't want to see another heart or whatever on the turn. I'm sure single heart holdings would call a bet here, but I'm sure I had the best hand all along. And honestly, a lot of the time, a single C bet, even if I just had ace high here, would take the pot down. But when I bet 20, both fold and we take it down. So flopping a set, that easy. In this next hand, we peel back pocket tens in the hijack. It's a straddle pop from the button, and 
there's one limp from under the gun one before the middle position one decides to open the action up to twenty dollars and with tens i think this is a pretty easy three bet spot as he can be opening pretty wide from the middle position and i just got to go with the sizing of 55 as if i do get re-raised i'm not fully committed yet like i would be if i went 70 80 dollars and when i do this the button straddler actually decides to ship on it's about 112 in that range and i'm not feeling great about my tens after this action and even more so when the middle position one decides to reshove for about 350 and he has me covered so now not feeling pretty great about tens i think patience is pretty key here as tens have shriveled up and i decided to let them go and they have kings and jacks so we faded a cooler and this next hand the straddle is on once again from the button position and we looked down at ace king offsuit when it's opened there's a limp from the big blind of the straddle it's open from under the gun one two or no under the gun to 18 under the gun one smooth calls and now the middle position decides to raise to sixty dollars I think this is a rather large raise and I don't want to just fully commit my stack with ace king offsuit so this is a kind of an awkward spot for me I think cold calling is just as strong as re reopening the action so I just decide to smooth call here and play a flop as I don't think the under the gun and under the gun one are as strong and when I just call the everyone else gets out of the way so we go heads up to a flop and honestly it's a pretty good flop for my range cold calling out of the middle position but I don't even know what that range is to be honest I could easily have ace king like I do here and random pocket pairs whatever but when we go heads up to a flop we see a flop of four eight ten two clubs one spade and when he snap checks it to me I think this is the green light to go for a bet as there's already so much money in the middle and I likely don't have the best hand and when I bet forty dollars that's honestly a, such a small sizing I just wanted to make it look like a value milky size and when I bet 40, he doesn't love it and ultimately ends up folding. So I'm not really sure if I should just be ripping it all in pre flop for about two, 275, 300-ish. But um, let me know how I played this hand and if you think that that semi-bluff worked. I mean, I might have had the best hand with Ace-King, but we took it down. In this next hand, we peel back king jack of clubs in the small blind the action is open from under the gun one to ten dollars it is called by the button the bit the small blind and myself i think this should be an easy three bet spot i don't know what i was thinking but i just call so we see a flop of ace six ace jack rainbow and small blind myself check it to the pre-flop aggressor and he checks it back and the button checks as well now the four of clubs hits the turn, we both check to the aggressor and he bets 15. With a pair, I don't think I could be going anywhere. I block a lot of straight opportunities that he could have, but when he checks the flop, I don't really think he has an ace a lot of the time, so I flick in the call and we're heads up to the river, which is the king of spades. And I don't want it to go check check if he does have a weak ace and decide to get tricky on the flop, and I decide to lead here for 35. And get him to pay me off with those ace x holdings but he rather pretty quickly calls with the same hand king jack and i'm not proud of this way because i easily could have three bet and won the pot right there but i think i learned for next time and we chopped that pot up in this next hand we look down at king jack offsuit in the small blind and this is the butchered hand of the night I never cold call from the small blind, but here we are. It's open from the hijack to 15, cutoff calls, and I call. And I want to experiment with some leading out here as this hits my range. And I don't I don't know what I was thinking yet. Yeah, it hits my range, sure. I'm just going to try to bully them off the hand. I laid out for 20, 
as they have a lot of the overcards. And the original opener goes out of the way, and the cutoff calls. Okay. 10 on the turn. That's a good card to represent, as I have a lot of those. And I'm going to continue betting. Maybe like a hand like 4 or 5, or maybe even a hand like 6 7 that has a straight draw. We'll just let it go that has some equity. And 4 or 5 that had 2 pair, but doesn't feel very good about it now. And I lead for 40. And now the cutoff decides to cut out some chips. And she does the old min raise to $80. Yep. King Jack High is just a very no good here. I'm not sure what this play was trying to do, but I got my car, my hand caught in the cookie jar with King Jack off. I think this is a pretty similar hand to the last episode, maybe two episodes ago when I butchered a hand just as bad with King Jack off. I need to stop playing that. All right, she wins the hand. Nice hand, ma'am. In this next hand, we open sixes in under the gun position to ten. I think it called in four spots, the middle position, button, and the big blind all call. So we see an innocent flop of deuce, three, four, two diamonds. When the small blind checks, or the big blind checks, I decide to see bet, as I have an overpair here, to 15. And just the big blind decides to make the call. And now to the turn, which is the eight of hearts. And I'm putting him on two overs, king jack, jack 10, queen jack, whatever, two overs. I want to charge those overs, so now I decide to bet 25. Looking at the size of the pot, I think I could have went even bigger. Because I gave him a pretty good price to call, but he folds and we take it down. In this next hand, we look down at pocket fours in middle position. We open to 12 after there's three limbs. I think I could either just be smooth calling and not opening with this hand. But... I have a pair, and sh they showed some weakness, so I decided to raise it up. Should be raising probably 15 to 20, but whatever. We went with 12, get called by the small blind. The middle position, or the undergun, undergun one, and middle position. So we go four ways to a flop of 10, 5, 6. And when the action checks to me, I don't really love this board, so I check it back. Now the turn's a deuce of hearts. Adds a lot of potential to me. And now when the small blind leaves out for 20 bucks, I don't really want to give up in the hand yet as I have the straight opportunities, maybe some trips opportunities, some four half flush opportunities. We don't want to leave yet. Oh, it's actually 15. So we call, and the king of clubs rolls on the turn in the river. I think this card will be hitting me a lot of the time, but when he bets out for 20, I just let it go. I think we could be folding on the turn, but that's how we... In this next hand, look down at pocket eights, in the cutoff and after there's two limps I decided to open the action up to 15 and get called by Garrett who's in the big blind the middle position and the hijack they all call so we go four ways to a flop and that flop comes pretty good 10 7 8 rainbow so we flop a set and when Garrett checks on this flop and the middle position decides to lead out for $20, I'm not going to love a lot of turn cards on this type of board as it's very dynamic and a set is pretty vulnerable to straights and maybe even backdoor flush opportunities. So I don't want the other players to get a good price to call and hit those draws that they might have. So I decided to bump it on up and she really only has about 40 behind this bet. So I pretty much commit her and bet raise it up to $60 and Garrett gets out of the way and she pretty quickly makes the call so I think I'm ahead right now and indeed I am when she shows jack 10 so we're gonna have to fade some outs I'm gonna need your guys help please pray for me and bring me some run good as the board comes out I'm gonna need some help and the nine comes on the turn, of course. The one card we didn't want to see. I'm just, whatever, I'm so done. Oh, we were for a nine! Let's go, we boat up. In this next turn, we look down at pocket aces in the middle position. When it's lit by under the gun and under the gun one, 
the actions on me I decided to open it up to 15 and it is folded around by the remaining players to the button and he decides to put in the call and the rest of the players decide to fold so we go heads up to pretty neutral looking flop 10 three five all clubs ten three six all clubs not the best for my hand i have ace of spades ace of diamonds so i decide to check it and he decides to bet ten dollars so i can't go anywhere and we see the four diamonds on the turn i decide to check again just going to check call mode as i'm not loving these cards under as i don't have the club and now he bets 25 once again, he could be doing this with a 10, as I did show some weakness by checking on the flop. And I think I've underwrapped my hand rather well. And now we see the river, which is the 9 of spades. Again, inconsequential, unless he had 9-10, which would be just a gross hand. I think he has a lot of the time ace-10, king-10, jack-10. But now when he bets the river again, I'm hating life. He's just always going for value. And... Now looking back, I don't see what I beat that goes for three streets of value. Um, ace 10 with the ace of clubs, king 10 with the king of clubs, not many other combos. It's always going to be sets, probably two pairs. I don't see him calling with two pairs, many two pairs on that. From the big blind though, or from the button though, and whatever, I just got to see it. I'm just a non-believer and... Uh, Probably one of my worst calls of the night, and I flick it in, and he shows tens. Nice hand, sir. Aces go down in flames. Then one of the last hands of the night. We looked down at 9-10 of spades in the big blind. When Garrett limps from middle position, and the button and big blind both do as well, I decide to bump it up. I want to put some money in the pot with a nice hand, like 9-10. I bump it up to 15, and only Garrett puts in the call. So the small bind, maybe it was the button, whatever. Button or small bind, fold, and the big bind does as well. So we go heads up to a pretty overkill flop. 9-9-10. Nine, nine, I don't know how to play when I flop the pretty much nuts. I check, he checked. I should be betting that with mo almost all my range, but whatever. I'll do it next time. I decide to bet on the turn and to 15 and he calls. Now the river is overkill. Nine of clubs. We river quads. This is where I should be checking 100% of the time. I see more value in letting him bluff on his missed draws or maybe even ace high type hands. But I didn't want to check and see an ace high hand that I could have gotten value from. So I decided to bet for 50 and he snap folds. Oh, sorry, Garrett. Had to get quads on you. And I show him my nuts again. There's my nuts, Garrett. What's going on, guys? Just got out of that 1 2 session. Cashed up 130. Can't complain. I think I was up near 160 at the high point of the session. But it was a swingy one. Ran aces into pocket tens for a flop set. So that one stung a little bit. But lost the minimum because it was three club board. But you'll see that. Had some other hands, made quads. I couldn't stop getting pocket pairs and ace king. So can't complain about that. But profit 130, not gonna complain once again. Um, there might be a few hands less in this session and a few less analogy because there wasn't much deep thought into how I played some of these. But if you have some feedback into how I played some of these, let me know in the comments. Like, comment, subscribe. I don't say that enough in my videos. so. Please do it. And shout out to Garrett and Gerald, who I met tonight. They subscribed. Thanks a lot, guys. And a, and a couple other people at the table asked about my channel. And I hope you guys can follow along the journey and just enjoy poker content. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.